Okay, so welcome. Um, we're excited to be here. IDRC is committed to try to share information that hopefully helps all of migrant ed. Um, and our focus, of course, is on IDNR. And so we felt like it was time just for a general refresher. And we get a lot of requests for more scenarios, more scenarios. And so we're kind of, uh, we took a look at our assessment and some areas that people really normally struggle with. And so we thought we'd focus on that. I will be paying attention to the chat box. I also have Melissa with me. And so she can let me know if I'm missing some questions um, that you guys have. Now, I wanna say that, that states do have, um, we're gonna try to stay very much in the you know, black and white areas. There are some areas where you may say, well, our state does it a little bit different. I'm gonna to try to stick to the guidance, stick to the specific focus. So I do not want you to go back and say, Jessica says this, of course, what your state says is the most important as far as um, how they do things, but we do want to make sure that everyone's aware of the, the general eligibility rules, and so we'll be focusing on that area. Uh, we had a poll on asking how long people have been with MEP, and right now it looks like that 19% of you have been here less than a year, 25% less than five years, 25% five to 10 years, and then 32 with our largest percentage being over 10 years. 52% um, of you are recruiters, 3% are services providers, 13% of you do everything, 8% um, are administrators, and 24% are other. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll for now. Um, and we will, here's the, I can share that so you can see. Okay, so want to remind everybody first, that we all want to make sure that we're following the guidance and the regulations. So we do have those resources that we can go to when we have questions. I have a really handy copy that I believe, um, I think Ray Malesio gave this to me before, of, that just having everything typed out, that you can see it easily, it's printed. If anyone has any questions, I can quickly refer to that. So I would encourage everyone to make sure that you have access to that. I did put a link in there on the for the results page where you can actually access that. So we suggest that you go and make sure that you have the copy um, of that and that you can use that when you need it. So what I'm gonna be talking about today, of course, is a refresher, but I'm gonna use the idea, I know everybody trains in different ways. And the way I like to do training is the way that I would think about things when I was actually recruiting. So I worked for about 17 years in Tennessee and did a lot of recruiting there. I've also worked in capacities with IRRC and IDRC also and gone to states and done a lot, lot of recruitment. And in my mind, I like to kind of compartmentalize, like, how do I think through eligibility? So if it doesn't make sense, it's probably because my mind doesn't make sense, but it's maybe a little bit different than how you've had it, you know, taught to you before. I think that sometimes more than one ways is obviously good. So these are three things that, that we're going to go through kind of the thought process, and then we're going to look at scenarios. So you always want to establish if they're determine if when you're finding somebody, is there a migratory worker? Are there children eligible for the program? And then once you figure out these different, these two factors, what is the QAD? Like when is, you know, how long are they eligible? When did that get started? So we're going to look at kind of the flow. So if we have determining a migratory agricultural worker, and for those of you that have been here over, you know, 10 years, over five years, you know this. So just think about how you train other people. Think about in your own mind how you work through this. And for those that are new, hopefully this makes sense. So if I'm recruiting, I'm trying to figure out, is there a migratory agricultural worker? So in order to do that, I'm thinking, I need to know, is this person in front of me or is this OSY? Have they made a move, a qualifying move in the last 36 months? And we'll define qualifying move in just a second. Did they engage in new qualifying work within 60 days of the move? So when they moved, you know, they made this move, did they find work quickly or did they, did it take several months? And so if it's over 60 days, then that's going to be a problem. Did they get that work and actually start that work within 60 days of the move? And then was the work temporary, seasonal, and agriculture fishing? Now, that's not all. With migrant ed, there's always the if. So when we're thinking about that qualifying move, it needs to have these three factors. It needs to be due to economic necessity. It needs to be from one residence to another and from one school district to another. And then when we're thinking about this idea of engaging in the work, they need to not just apply, they need to actually start the work. So it wouldn't be like, yeah, I applied for the job, but they never gave it to me. So I applied for the job, I went to training, I started on this job. Then was the work in temporary or seasonal agriculture or fishing work? So you're walking yourself you know, through this as you think about it. The job has to be less than 12 months. 
as of course to be a qualifying activity, but these are the main thoughts that I'm thinking about. All right, this person in front of me, did they make a qualifying move in the last three months, 36 months? Did they engage in this new qualifying work within 60 days of the move? Was the work temporary or seasonal in agriculture or fishing, plus all these other caveats? So um, when I'm thinking of the engage, if the person is standing in front of me and they said, you don't know, it took me 90 days to get the work. And I'm thinking, okay, I can't just write them off. There's more I need to think about. So if they did not engage in the work, they need to have sought work in agriculture and had at least two other moves in the last 36 months that resulted in new qualifying move work after the move. So this is what I'm trying to figure out for the migratory worker. They wind up saying yes to all my questions that I had in the, you know, the previous slide. Let's see if I can get this to move. Um, then I'm, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what was the date? So once you determine there is a migratory agriculture worker, you wanna make note of the date that they were established as a migratory worker. So they say, yes, uh, you know, I did move for this. I did get the job. You know, I moved to work uh, harvesting onions and I got the job right away. Okay, now I've got to figure out this date. So this is the date they were established as a migratory worker. Then remember, they are considered to be a migratory agriculture worker from that date forward for 36 months. Example, May 5th, 2022, they made a move, got a job in agriculture. They would be considered an MAW until May 5th, 2025. So simple enough. Now we're thinking, what about the kids? Are they under the age of 22 and not yet graduated? Have they moved themselves as a migratory worker or a migratory agriculture worker or moved or to join or proceed a parent or spouse who was also a migratory agriculture worker? And was the move due to economic necessity from one school district to another? So if I can say yes to those, then I get to move on. And I always, if they say no, like, no, we just came here and it, I'm always looking the full 36 months for them too. Where have you been in the last three years? I want to know their full history. So if they say yes to this, you know, it looks like, yes, the kids have not graduated. Yes, they came together with him to work in onions. Yes, it was due to economic necessity for cross school district lines. <clears throat> then I have a migrant child. The problem then is I've got to determine when their eligibility started. So looking at that child or youth, when did the worker establish themselves, the one that they're traveling with, or they themselves become an established migratory worker? Was it within 36 months? And then I have to look at the date that that was established. And then I look at the last time the child moved with or alone, if it's OSY, to join that, that migratory agriculture worker. So those of you that have been here well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those that are brand new, I'm just giving you this quick refresher before we get into the scenario so you can think out the process. So then we have the new QAD. Now, remember, that they could have moved for non-ag purposes within that window of that migratory agriculture worker for subsequent moves, and we'll talk about that too. So remember the youth or child needs to move for economic necessity across school district lines for agriculture or a non-ag job within 36 months of when the migratory agriculture worker is established. So dad moved on this date, they moved again, maybe they first were in onions and then they moved for restaurant work, as long as it's still within that window, that 36 months of when that migratory agriculture was, worker was established, they can have a new QAD based on that last move that they all cross school district lines, they all made a move for economic necessity. Uh, all of that can give them a new QAD. Simple enough, right? <laughs> so some people get really confused on the residency date and the QAD. Residency date is just the date they move to their current school district area. So. We'll see how simple this is when we look at actual scenarios. That's kind of, it all boiled down to, you know, the basic things to be thinking about. Of course, you have to understand agriculture work that's eligible. You have to understand um, a few other things, but that's the main, main issues that you're looking at. So we do have a flow chart um, and I need to thank Bruce Lack for, and Justin Settles for the work on this. We did a long time ago. I think it was about a year and a half ago. We tried to take a look at everything that you needed to think about related to eligibility and put it into to three different flowcharts. And it started out with this idea of how do you establish a migratory agriculture worker, determine that, how do you determine the kids, and then how do you determine the QAD? And so if anyone wants access to that, um, I will go ahead and drop it into the chat box so that you can see that too, because it might be helpful in some of the scenarios. So let me go back where I was. Okay. So um, there was a question by new QAD. Does that mean the 36 month clock starts again? 
Very good question. That's exactly what it means. So a new qualifying arrival date for the kids means that they can be eligible for another 36 months for the program. Perfect. That's exactly what that means. Okay. So let's do a scenario. So I'm going to leave this up. And then I'm also going to put a poll so you guys can put your answers once we decide, once we go through this. So we'll, I'll read it together. I know a lot of people like need to read it on their own. Um, but it says a worker and who her two children, ages seven and 10, moved from Arkansas to Illinois on August 1st, 2020, to work picking pumpkins. She worked picking pumpkins for two months and then switched to a temporary job cleaning hotel rooms. Then the worker and the children moved again from Illinois to St. Louis, Missouri on November 7, 2020. And she began working as a janitor in a chemical factory. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this up and I'm gonna ask you a question. Is the family eligible? And if they are, what is the QAD? So I'm gonna put on a poll. Um, I'm gonna close out this poll and I'm gonna put on a new poll. Let's see. So this is called scenario one poll. I'm gonna launch it. Think about your answer. We're gonna give you two minutes. I'll be quiet so you can think it through. And I'll put a little timer on. Um, and you've got about two minutes to think it out and go ahead and put your answer in. And we'll wait until we see that most participants have answered. That's how I'll gauge when we're ready to get started again. Okay, so it looks like we got about 140 of you out of about 207 have answered. So we'll give you about a 30 seconds more and we'll we'll share the results. Those of you that raise your hand, if you want to put your comment in the chat box, go ahead and do that. Okay, so <clears throat> let me end the poll and share the results. So we have a question. It says, is the family eligible? 98% of you that answered said yes. Two, three of you said they are not eligible. Then we have the issue of the QAD. We have 58% of you say that it is 8-1-2020. 40% say 11 7 and 2% say not eligible. And we are going to assume that, yes, she started, you know, she got to, right after she started picking pumpkins right away. Um, so <clears throat> right now, let's look at where we're going with this. So right now, overwhelmingly, the group says they believe they're eligible, but we are very divided on um, the QAD. And the interesting thing is, in this particular family, it's two different program years that they could actually be eligible for a new, you know, program year. Um, eventually in the long run there in 36 months, if you kind of look at the two different QADs. So we want to figure out which one is the correct one. Okay, so let's look at my mental process that we were talking about um, on the thought process. So did the family make a move in the last 36 months? You know, did the worker, did the worker make a move, qualifying move in the last 36 months? Did this person engage in the qualifying work within 60 days of the move. So mom moved specifically for pumpkins and then she got the job right away and the work was temporary or seasonal. 
So let's look and, and check this out and see um, where we are. Yes, August 1st to work in pumpkins. She got the work soon after the move. She worked for two months and it was seasonal. So, so far we're absolutely good that we have a migratory agricultural worker. So she would be eligible as a, she would have that status um, from the beginning of that August 1st date when she first moved for pumpkins. And I believe it was back in 2020, so it'd be, yeah, August 1st, 2020. Um, we know that that's when she, she will be eligible as a, have that status as a migratory agricultural worker until August 1st, 2023. This is very important for us to remember that particular thing. So then we take a look at the kids. Have they graduated yet? Did they move with the migratory agricultural worker? Was it due to an economic necessity? So yes, yes, they're under the age of 22, not yet graduated. Yes, they moved with the migratory agricultural worker. And yes, um, the move was due to economic necessity. So we kind of figured that out, but now we've got to figure out that QAD. So the migratory agriculture worker was established in that, you know, determined to be a migratory agriculture worker on August 1st, 2020. The last move that they made, whether it doesn't remember, every move that can trigger a new QAD does not always have to be for agricultural purposes. It does have to be a qualifying move. They have to cross school district lines. They have to move with the migratory agriculture worker, it has to be due to economic necessity. So they moved for other purposes, but it met that guidelines back on September 7th. Um, so you, ha you have, and I think it may have been 2020 instead of 2022. Yeah, sorry, I got the wrong date right there. Um, let me fix that right there. So you're not like, so for the slides, when we send this out, that it's not wrong. So you have this new, um, yeah, 2020. <clears throat> Let me share that again. Um, so you have this, this new QAD for them. So you want to remember that a lot of times we get really stuck in like, no, it has to be for agriculture, especially those of you that have been here longer, because in the old rules that this wouldn't even come into play. So the migratory agriculture work was established August 1st. The family moved again for non-ag purposes, but it was a qualifying move on November 7th. So they have the new QAD as 11-7-2020. So really important. Um, when we take a look at this, that would have been 58% of us would have put the wrong QAD right there. So those of you that 40%, that is the correct QAD. So let me take a look at. So Jessica asked, is it the same QAD for children and parents? Now, the only one that the, I mean, they moved together, so the family moved together. So your the QAD is really related to the children. So they get that new qualifying arrival date that gives them that 36 months to be eligible for the migrant program. When we're talking about how a migrant parent, you know, migratory agricultural worker is established, that's more related to just the window that they're considered a migratory agricultural worker. So um, Daisy said, said the information did not indicate a family move for economic necessity. So we are assuming because the family picked up and moved to work in pumpkins, and that's what she worked in specifically for two months, that that was a major part of their economic, if, they're, if it's to pay for their basic needs, uh, and that's their only source of income, then we wouldn't have to say, okay, you know, was that absolutely, you can ask them that, but we're assuming in this situation because they picked up, they moved, they're working two months in, in pumpkins, and then they picked up and moved for the next one. Um, we are assuming that that is due to economic necessity. So Damaris asked, what happens if parents are under 22? So yes, you would go back then and take a look to see if they were, still, if they hadn't yet graduated, um, and then they would have the same factors as if we were looking at the children to see, okay, <clears throat> let me go back to the, the slide here. Um, so let's just look, we would have to look, did they engage, you know, the same rules, and then it would be the date that they moved. Um, they could also be eligible and have that QAD, um, same situation. It was just that they would then be eligible at also themselves. Now, same COE or two, let's put that out there. So if the, if the parents were also um, OSY, would you need a separate COE? You guys answer each other. Let's see what people put in the chat box. What you need. So Damaris, you're saying if there was a, you know, two OSY and a kid, is that what you're saying? Or just two OSY that came together, that were together? So generally you'll have to, not, we might need a little bit of clarification. Now there was, um, Elvira Rayet said, when we're talking about economic necessity, it says economic necessity includes moving for work or because they could not afford to stay in the previous location. 
so that it, that shows exactly you know when they're moving specifically for work in pumpkins you know that's showing that that you know that's for that now if they only went and worked in pumpkins two days that may be a total different thing but she picked up and she moved specifically for that and so it shows that so we've got two two different coes yes separate coes there was a comment that says i think the question is whether a subsequent move gets a new coe so yeah the same thing applies for an osy that does a subsequent move yes they can still have a new qad based on their subsequent move um, so two coes two coes Juan says you need to create a separate COE for every child that meets a different eligibility criteria. Exactly. Well said. Okay. So very good. We're going to stop sharing this one and close that one out. And then we're going to um, move on to a new scenario. If you have a question, I see several people raising their hand. Um, we're not going to really address those other than if you put them in the chat box. So go ahead and put your questions there. Okay. So here, I think this is the one we just did. All of our little slides. Um, so there we have. Okay, scenario two. Allie moves, she's 20 years old, okay, from Davenport, Iowa to Rochester, Minnesota to join her husband Lou, who is 21. Allie moved on June 14, uh, and moved in June, sorry, 14 months after her husband had moved. Her husband Lou had been working in a dairy milking cows ever since he had arrived. Lou told the recruiter, um, he plans to continue working at the dairy. Neither Allie nor Lou were able to finish high school. Both left high school to work and make money for their families in the, da in the Davenport, Iowa area. Their move to Rochester was their first move. So I'm going to put up a poll for scenario two. I'm going to go ahead and launch that. The question is, who is eligible? If they are eligible, what is the QAD? So we'll give you a little bit. And we'll see when the majority of you guys have answered, we'll, we'll discuss this. And there was a question about is the dairy work year round? Just check out what the scenario says and kind of make your your deduction based on that. Okay, so it looks like a bunch of you have answered. We'll give you about 10 seconds or so. Right, I'll go ahead and end this and share it so you guys can see the results. So we have 73% of you say neither are eligible. And there's been some comments in the chat that kind of um, are hinting to some of the answers for that. Uh, we didn't really put the year in there, but there's something in there that 14 months, um, Sarah Calvert said he's been there for about 14 months. So yes, it's year round. Um, Velma said usually dairy work is considered year round. Uh, Carissa says not a temporary work, longer than 12 months, they don't qualify. But if you look on our results, we have 73% of you saying neither are eligible. 15% of you say both are eligible. 9% say Lou is eligible and 3% say Ali is eligible. And 24% say that the QAD is 14 months ago. So this is hence, we see that there's a lot of different levels of understanding of the, of the, the rules. 
the hint really was um, the 14, per, no, you know, the 14 months here. So Wilson says, well, the cows don't go on vacation, so it must be year round. So what is the issue with this particular situation? If you take a look at it um, and we see then, you know, Allie moved to join her husband. That still looks, that looks fine. Allie moved in June 14 months after her husband had moved. So we are already past a year that she's joining him. So it's over 12 months. Her husband, Lou, which could be considered an OSY if he's eligible, has been working milking dairy cows ever since he had arrived. So she's now joining him 14 months later. So he's now had a job for sure over 12 months. Lou told the recruiter he plans to continue working at the dairy. Neither were able to finish. So at this point, at this situation, you know, you're just meeting him. You're just finding out. Lou's already been there 14 months. She's, I mean, he's been at the same place. She's joining him afterwards 14 months. There's not much that you can do here. Um, it says here, Luis is eligible QAB 14 months ago. So. Shanta's comment could possibly be um, if you had met him 14 months ago and he had said to you, I'm only staying at the dairy for just two months, and that was his original intention, then at that time you could have. But if you meet someone who's already been at a job over 12 months, you cannot go with that. You would not be able to say, okay, your QAD was 14 months ago because they are at a job that is over. It is considered a permanent job. Remember, when we talked about it has to be a temporary job lasting less than 12 months in um, agriculture or fishing. So Juan um, says it is over 12 months. It's not temporary anymore. It's permanent. That's what we mean to find them as soon as we can. Very good point. Betty says if she applied for a job fixing fences for the cows temporary, at least she would qualify. So yeah, if you have the what ifs, there are ways that you can, um, but Ali would not be eligible. Lou would not be eligible. Um, Allie could qualify if she gets the job and works less than 12 months. So there are a bunch of what ifs, but right here in this situation, they would not be eligible. But your what ifs are important to think about. Maybe you want to check back with Allie in a couple months and say, hey, where are you working? Maybe she, you know, winds up getting something that would be eligible. But at this point, right in front of us, it would not be eligible. So we want to make sure that we remember that. So if we take a look at did they engage, you know, you have all these things. Yes, he crossed school district lines, you know, an economic necessity from one school district to another. Yes, he's working at a dairy. It is, you know, could be considered a possible eligible activity, but no, the work was not temporary. It's a permanent job. And so that just puts us out of the running. We don't have that migratory established, you know, that status for any migratory agricultural worker. Allie is not yet. She hasn't done any work yet. So you have um, all of those things to think about. Okay. Moving on, so Lou is not yet established as a migratory agricultural worker. <clears throat> All right, so remember the things we've talked about so far, and we're gonna apply them to the newest situation. Um, so Shanta said, oh, it's permanent. I didn't see that properly. And that's that's okay, that's why we're doing these. There's a lot of things we have to think about. This one says, let me move all my stuff out of the way so I can read it. Um, last year on June 1st, 2021, Isabel's father, Raphael, moved on his own from Illinois to Florida to find work. Six weeks after his move to Florida, he began working, pick, he began work picking oranges. He returned to Illinois later in November of 2021. Over the holiday break in December, he moved again on his own to find work in Kentucky. Unable to find work in Kentucky, he returned to Illinois. On July 10th, 2022, Isabel, who's 16 years old, she's not yet finished school, and her father moved to Texas as her uncle offered the family temporary work in a sawmill, sorting logs before they were cut into boards. Her father, sorry, that the he father, her father started the job right away once they arrived. Is Isabel eligible? If she is eligible, what is the QAD? And I realize this has a lot of words to it. Um, so we're going to take a look at scenario three. I'll go ahead and put the, put the uh, poll up. And you can go ahead and decide if she thinks she is, if you think she's eligible, and then what would be the date? And I will be quiet and let you work.
We'll give you about 10, 15 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll so you guys can see the results. So 131 of you out of the 148 that answered said yes. They believe Isabel is eligible. Then 11% of you said no, she is not. 11% um, below, and then we take a look at the dates. So we have uh, five, five of you said that the, the um, QAD would be 6121. Two of you said 1121. And then the large majority of you said 710 2022. So let's walk through the thinking of this, okay? <clears throat> Before we go on to the other slides. Last year on June 1st, 2021, Isabel's father, Rafael, moved on his own from Illinois to Florida to find work. All right, we're trying to see <clears throat> six weeks. Is that within 90 days? Or 60 days, sorry, is that within 60 days? Give me a yay or nay in the chat box. So six weeks after his move to Florida, he began working, picking oranges. So that's still within 60 days, okay? So at this point, we now have a migratory agricultural worker, okay? He's established as a migratory agricultural worker. I think in Oregon, they talk about the hats put on him and he can wear that hat for 36 months. So he would still be considered a migratory agricultural worker until June 1 of 2024 based on that idea, okay? So he goes, now Isabel's not with him, he's all by himself, but that's when we're looking at him. Was there a worker? Is there a migratory agricultural worker? He goes back to Illinois later in November of 2021. So she's not moving with him. So we're not getting a QAD from these. This is just dad moving by himself. Over the holiday again, um, he goes on his own to find work in Kentucky. Unable to find work, he comes back. Again, she's not going with him. And then she doesn't go with him until July 10th, 2022. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, he's come back with her since then, but they pick up and move together. So they are moving together, Isabel and her migratory agricultural worker dad um, to go to work in a sawmill. So, and it says move to Texas as her uncle offered her father temporary work. So this is not permanent work in a sawmill sorting logs before they're cut into boards. So some of you have to decide, is this a subsequent move or is this a new QAD? So a large majority of you said the new QAD is 7-10-2022. Some of you, your head spinning and saying, okay, um, is there, you know, is this the sawmill eligible? So let's take a look at that. So one of the things in the non-regulatory guidance talks about what is considered initial processing of trees. F-15 is initial processing of trees considered agricultural work. Yes, because trees are a raw product, the initial processing of trees is considered agricultural work. So I don't know how else you process trees other than a sawmill. So the beginning parts, he's still sorting the logs before they're run through the mill. That could be considered a qualifying work if it's temporary. So. Um, Taking a look at that, at this particular family with what we talked about before, let's take a look at all of these different factors. We're looking at the migratory agricultural worker. Yes, he harvested oranges. And then he also went for work. He reestablished himself again as a migratory agricultural worker when he made another move to work at the sawmill. He engaged in work both times and both jobs. One was seasonal and the other is temporary. So he was migratory agricultural worker was established again on July 10, uh, you know, 2022. So it says, could you go back to the page, please, to take a picture of the guidance section? Yes, let me go back. Right there. So there, Edgar asked for, so I will, there it is. Remember F15. Okay, so we're thinking about this. Uh, <laughs> Wilson says, that's a job where you have to log in every day. Yes, that's true. Um, okay, so now this is the part where everyone's getting, some people are getting a little bit jumbled on Remember, he was established as a migratory agricultural worker the last time on that July 10th, 2022. Last time the child made a qualifying move with the migratory agricultural worker uh, was July 10th, 2022. The new QAD is 7-10-2022, okay? 
hope that makes sense. Um, and I had been kind of oblivious about the sawmills. I was actually in Kentucky a couple of weeks ago and they asked me about that. And I said, no, that's not eligible. And um, I left Tennessee in about 2016 and they changed the rules since then. And I've worked in a different capacity and haven't trained recruiters to do things in my own state and just kind of missed that sawmills could be considered part of that initial processing. And so wanted to make sure that other people didn't make that same miss that I did. So question, would you have the same QAD if the last move was not agricultural? All right, we'll put that out to the group. Very good question. So Lane says, would that still um, be? Alejandro says, yes. So let's see if we get any no's. But yes, that would be, yes, it would be the same. So you're just extending that window that he's considered a migratory agricultural worker longer. But remember, they can move for multiple other non-ag purposes with as long as he's still considered a migratory agricultural worker. And so yes, that would be the same QAD. Good question. Okay. And then the residency date, and if any of you are getting that confused, would be the date they moved to the new town in Texas on 7-10-22. Okay. How are we doing on time? Still okay. So Henry Miller said yes, because a child moved, made a qualifying move with the migratory agriculture worker. Exactly. Um, if you have a question, if you're raising your hand, make sure you put it in the chat box. That way we can address those questions. Okay, we're gonna put things up. Um, okay, so there was a question first. Christine said, do you know what moment in processing logs initial processing ends? So I'm sure states can make their exact determination. We are just in generally saying when the log is no longer the log, you know, like you start pushing it through the mill, and then it turns into a board, it's no longer the log. So kind of, you know, like the chicken processing, when it's still the chicken, they're cutting into pieces. And then once they add a new ingredient to it, then it would no longer be considered. So um, we are, you know, we're looking at it just cut and dry, saying, all right, as long as it's still the log before they push it through and turn it into something else. But of course, states can, can define exactly those, you know, what is considered initial processing for them. Question would be be able to send these scenarios again through email. So what I'll do is for all of you guys that signed up for this and that are participating, I will send you today, I'll send you the recording and the um, presentation and also a reminder of our evaluation. So Raquel says like pork bellies getting injected for bacon is not qualifying. Exactly. Okay, so let's do a true or false. This might be easier than having to sort through all of the scenarios, but here is the question. A worker who has been employed for longer than 12 months on a farm at the time of the eligibility interview may still be considered a migratory agriculture worker if the jobs they have performed are seasonal. So let's see what you think of that. Let's put the poll out there. Don't put your answer in the chat box. Go ahead and put it in the poll uh, and I will launch that. And we'll give you just about 30 seconds for that. Give me about 10 seconds more. Fill that out. Okay. So this one always disturbs me when we when we do this. So so I think one of our challenges in MigraNet is making sure that we have that we all have similar ways that we're qualifying families. So take a look at this result. Here's the result. So somehow we're really divided on this. We have 40% of you say true, that yes, this could be considered. 60% um, <laughs> oh so scary like Halloween. 60% um, of you say false. So I understand that a lot can be going in our mind and we could be like, okay, if it's, you know, if it's seasonal, maybe this. So the truth of the matter is a seasonal job is affected by seasons, but it still has to be under 12 months. Any job that is over 12 months is considered a permanent job. 
So a worker that has been employed for longer than 12 months, they're still been at the place. Now you might in your mind be thinking, okay, they came and went back and forth. Maybe they work for the same tomato farmer and they go back and forth each year. You may be having something else in your mind when you're thinking about this. But if we were to just say, there's been a worker that has been at the same farm, same place, same location for 12 months, they may do a series of jobs. It may be harvesting one vegetable and then harvesting another vegetable and then doing another one um, and preparing the fields. If they are still in that same job for that same employer right there, not moving and going to another state, none of that, and they, they're still employed over 12 months, that is considered a permanent job. So if you're thinking, um, it, it says here, and just to make sure, this is from the guidance that says, is a worker who is, was hired to perform a series of different jobs. So it could be a series of seasonal jobs, a series of you know, different jobs for the same employer, which together lead to the worker being employed by the same employer for more than 12 months. Now, I do know that some workers move across the country even for the same employer. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the same exact place, the same location, everything, they're not moving. Um, for 12 months employed on a temporary seasonal basis. They say, no, workers who are hired to work for more than 12 months by the same employer, regardless of how many different jobs they perform, are not engaged in new temporary seasonal employment as provided in the definitions of migratory agricultural worker and migratory fisher. So I just wanted to put that out there because I think sometimes we can think, oh yeah, it's seasonal. It's a bunch of seasonal. Anything that's over 12 months for the same employer, same location, then it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna be eligible for us. Okay, so let's stop sharing that one and let's take a look at another one. We have a little bit more time. Let's check this one out. Another true and false. We'll go a little bit easier on you. So a recruiter must always determine if a worker moved in order to obtain qualifying work. So is that that had to have moved, their purpose was to obtain qualifying work. Is that absolutely essential? So let me take Throw this up here. This one might be a little tricky. So just think about it. Um, think of what the guidance would tell you. And think of whether if you've been there a long time ago, you remember we used to have to always determine. So we've got, let's see how this plays in. Okay, give me about five seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna end it and share it so you can see. I hope you can see this. I'm not even sure if you can see it when I share it. Hopefully you can. Um, that you have uh, 90, 60% of you saying that is true. We must always determine if a worker moved in order to obtain qualifying work. 40% of you say, no, that's not something that's required anymore. So let's read what the guidance says. No, as amended, the ESEA no longer require that a worker needed to move in order to obtain qualifying work. The new statutory defines enable individuals to be considered migratory agricultural workers and migratory fishers without the need for recruiters or states to determine the intent or purpose of the worker's move. So that just goes into this idea that we're trying to determine, is there a migratory agricultural worker? Um, and so that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. The person's in front of you, you're trying to figure out, is there a worker? Their intentions might've actually been to work in something else, but they wound up getting job right away in agriculture and that's okay. They could still meet that definition of the migratory agricultural worker. Now, some of you may say, well, yeah, but what happens if they came for the job and they didn't get the job? Then you have to look for those two previous moves. So you can kind of see that. Okay, so Wilson says the old word intent we used to deal with is no more. That is correct. Some of you don't know what we're talking about that we used to have to be, you know, to figure out, well, did you move for that purpose? And so, um, but I won't go too much in the old rules just in case you're new so that doesn't stick with you and the new, new rules don't. All 
All right, so here is probably what will be our last scenario for the day. Um, let me go ahead and stop this. I, Ines says one has to engage. Um, when did that new rule take place? That new rule took place back in 2017. Let me pull that. Okay, so Miguel and Avelina, Miguel's 19, Avelina's 18, and their baby moved to Wisconsin on April 30th, 2022 to work on a new farm pruning grapes. Miguel learns upon arriving that the farm is no longer hiring. He is able to obtain an official rejection letter from the farm stating that all of the positions have been filled up. A recruiter speaks to Miguel on June 12th, 2022 and finds that they still haven't obtained work. Miguel tells the recruiter that although they moved alone this year, they previously regularly each moved with their parents when they were younger. Miguel had previously moved with his parents to pick blueberries in Colorado on April 15th, 2017, and on June 20th of 2018. Avelina had moved with hers in 2015 and 2016. Neither has finished school. Are they eligible? So this is scenario four. I'm gonna go ahead and put um, scenario four up so you can think about it. Go ahead and answer the poll and I will give you a little bit of time to do that. Give you about 30 seconds more. Five more seconds. There's answers still coming in. Okay. We again are split on this. So um, share the results. So are they eligible? 134 of you responded. 55% of you said no, they are not. 36% of you said yes. 8% of you said only Miguel, and 1% of you said only Avelina. So I want some of those ones, I want you to think about, let's let's walk through this. Um, it says, but one COE could be a long, let's, Elizabeth said that. Let's walk through this on our thought process to figure out what's going on. So um, can anyone tell me the rule if they didn't get work? Um, if they didn't get the work, go ahead and type in the rule. What are what what parameters can we possibly make find a way to make them eligible? You know, under what um, Susan Mary says they have to have a history of previous moves work. Um, they have to have the intent, and they have to have two months. Somebody's got all uh, two months here. Let's see. Sorry, there's a lot of answers coming in. Um, it says I, I know I saw one two moves in the last 36 months. So that's very important. Are these any of these moves, other moves within the last 36 months on this um, on there? Wilson says it would have to be on a previous one. So that, that's a very good point. You can always go back and look and see if there's anything else in their previous history before this moved. Um, Sharita said, did they actively seek qualifying work? 
Alejandro says, no, they were moves, but they were not the established workers. So they could have, if these moves were a little bit closer, then it would have been fine. Um, Henry says, if, if an individual did not engage in new employment, such as after the qualifying move, such individual may be considered a migratory agriculture worker if the individual sought such uh, new employment and has a recent history of moves for temporary seasonal employment. And they define recent history within the 36 months. So two qualifying moves in the last three years. Um, Sarah says, especially with the odd scenarios, you don't see this that often, they would have to have a history within the last three years. Yes, Sarah, you're, for the purposes of training today, sometimes we're a little bit more complicated, thankfully, than what you see. Um, so we've got a problem here. They don't, they try to get the job, but they didn't. They have history when they were younger, um, moving around with their families, but um, they don't have enough of those, those recent moves in the last 36 months to really go with it. So um, Tonda says they have to have history within two moves of the last 36 months. So you see this, some of us, um, Esmeralda says K3 still no moves within the last 36 months. So it's not always this, you know, this like, 36% of us would have made the wrong determination here unless they had a previous, you know, within the 36 months before that, there was some other move that we're missing or something like that. So we want to be sure that we're really aware of the rules here. And just as a reminder, because we've been going through the same process here, yes, they both made, you know, the move. Um, no, the work was not available. They were looking for seasonal work, but right now we haven't been able to establish that there's a migratory agriculture worker. Remember, if they didn't engage, then we would have to find two moves in the last 36 months. So they didn't have that. Um, so that's our challenge. Their moves were over 36 months ago, so they would have not been eligible. So um, there are, sometimes there's other questions that have been posed to OME that if you go to the results webpage, and maybe I'll just see if I can go there, that way you can see it um, right here. <clears throat> there's policies and question answers that OME sometimes will give additional guidance uh, on here. And so there might been, you know, maybe there was a question. You can kind of check these out. There's, it's in all different orders. Um, you know, here, somebody had asked before um, about, you know, initial processing. Somebody turned in and says, is turning chicken fat into oil considered qualifying agricultural work? The worker puts the chicken fat into the machine then melts it, turning it into oil. He then sends the oil to be shipped elsewhere. The worker does not directly work with the chickens or extract the fat. He begins placing with the fat. And so OME said, no, based on this, um, we believe it's past initial processing stage. So you might see some extra things that might help you with some of your questions that you have. Um, and so, you know, that's there for your, for your review. Um, any other random questions that you can put in the chat box, go ahead and put those in. And in the meantime, we're also going to drop in the chat box. Um, we have, I'm going to leave a little bit of time for this. We do, um, for what I do, I am required to have evaluations of all the work that we do. And so we try to make sure that if, you know, if you guys have feedback or you want, you know, us to particularly train on a specific, you know, topic that would be helpful for you, then um, that, you know, the, the evaluation is a way to show us if you're helping to, if we're helping to teach something, if it's helpful. So we would appreciate it if you would fill that out. Um, I probably haven't pushed that enough over time. So we wanna thank you for your time joining us. Um, we will send an email to all of you guys that participated with the presentation files and the recording. And I'm gonna stop the recording.